In this video, we're gonna learn why so many men are quitting their corporate jobs for freedom, right? The corporate environment has become quite hostile to men, especially in recent years. And we have an interesting case of someone we're gonna go through here, something that's very relatable to me. Uh, someone who he has worked, uh, he's quite young, he's in his early 20s. He worked at Thomson Reuters, which is a major news company. They produce a lot of finance news, they work a lot alongside major financial institutions to give them news in a quite a quick format so they can engage in fast trading decisions. So it's a very interesting place to be working. And we have an interesting story there. Now he was working at Thomson Reuters here in Canary Wharf. Canary Wharf is like the Wall Street of London. And just opposite is where I was working actually here in Morgan Stanley for, for some of my career. And um, it's quite an interesting dynamic. And despite working in the Wall Street of London, this guy was quite low pay, right? He was only getting paid like 25 grand a year. Now making 25 to 30 grand a year in pounds or in dollars is very low for working in central London in the financial hub. So this shows you how companies are exploiting young men and how they're getting fed up. And let's learn from his story here. Basically, I spent like four or five months the last half of uni and a couple of months after frantically applying for graduate jobs primarily in recruitment that I knew I never actually wanted to go into because I knew that they were full of shit offering these OTEs of 80k in their first year and that a lot of these firms would just wide boys like pick up the phone mentality but I wasted loads of time with it because these were the majority of jobs available so I ended up in a position where I had to actually get an even less desirable job working in customer service in Leeds. I had to stay in Leeds because where I come from originally here in Devon, there is no prospect. There is virtually no work unless you go to Exeter or Plymouth. Plymouth is a shithole and there is not a chance in hell I wouldn't want it to go there. Public transport would have taken ages as well. And then Exeter, really nice city, small, but again, not much prospect. So I had to stay in Leeds and I got a customer service job working for a private school uniform supplier in an area of Leeds called Armley. Armley is also a total dump and I used So it's quite funny this is the backstory before he gets to Reuters right he has been he, his story is typical of many men or many people in the west right it's a very tough job hunt after you finish your college or university studies you end up kind of going into jobs you don't actually want but it's just a job that you can get which he mentions working in a recruitment agency to effectively help other people get jobs and things like that and this is what ends up happening is this system is not providing uh, people with opportunities to fill, fill their purpose and i'm not saying everyone has to work you know some kind of dream job everyone gets a dream job it's just a lot of of men and I think a lot of people are kind of waking up like hold on is this system actually serving anyone in a good way and it's not and all of lies is manipulating you as the employee and it's manipulating the people that it's selling to in many cases right and he kind of mentions this here in terms of these recruitment agencies he uses the term wide boys wide w-i-d-e basically poor business practices and things like that and uh, of course this will create unhappiness throughout people and a lot of the mental health issues we see here right and an important point here he's talking about you know looking for jobs outside of london where he originally grew up and uk just like most of the west is falling apart right particularly outside of major cities you might have good job opportunities in london or new york san francisco for tech industry type jobs things like that but outside of the major hubs, the, the, there is very little opportunity, very little economic growth. These countries are in decline through deliberate mismanagement by governments and corporations and various shadow entities, right? And this is the thing, if, if you can't get a job in a major city like London and you're stuck looking at jobs in smaller cities in your country, whether that's Leeds or like smaller towns, say in America, things like that, you, you're just stuck in a situation where what opportunity you do get doesn't really pay well and it just barely covers your living costs and there's not much room for progress and something I realized many years ago and it's a phrase I coined is that when you're in the first world or the developed world you have third world living standards at first world prices so third world living for first world prices like what are you getting that justifies you know some of the high prices you are paying you know whether it's for property whether it's the high tax rate you're paying you're getting not much that is different from the third world and that's why you see a lot of people who do have the opportunity maybe through savings investments rental properties who do move to a third world country they go from a leading first world country to a third world country and people go oh why would someone move from um let's just say hypothetically 
why would someone move from California to live in Poland? Wouldn't people, people in Poland, you think, would be f fighting over each other to go and live and work in California? But you see the opposite happening with some people because they want the better living standards for a lower price and a more chill life. So that's another reason why a lot of men are kind of seeing through the scam of this corporate environment and looking for other opportunities. So another thing he's going to mention here and another reason why men are kind of quitting corporate jobs is because they want their freedom. And he's going to talk about time freedom here. Now, this is something important for you to bear in mind because the, the core of men is not security, right? Men will pursue security in terms of a stable job if they have like obligations or a commitment to society but men these days they don't have any stake in society so of course they're not going to be opting to be you know you know sacrificing their freedom a man's a man impulse is freedom so if you're going to control every aspect of a man's life he might play along with that because okay well maybe he has a job and he has a house and he has a stable a relationship with his wife and they have kids but if men don't have that stake they're going to go okay well why am i going to contribute to this system i'd rather prefer my freedom right you're not going to get people to work slavishly for nine to five jobs if there's there's no sin in society and all it's going to do is cover their basic living costs they might as well live in a third world country men i have to get up at like seven in the morning I am not a morning person and this is part of the problem that I found in employment. Like my chronotype, I go to sleep late, I wake up later. That's my body clock, that's how it is. We aren't all meant to wake up at fucking eight in the morning to be in the office at nine. It's not how humans have evolved, right? I feel very strongly about that area, but that is how I am. So I was doing... So that's a, a small point there, right? Now, employment, again, you know, people want... F flexibility over their time particularly if they're going to be working long hours in a dead-end job right uh, it sounds kind of pretentious that oh i want to start slightly later when it comes to my day job but it just makes sense you know not everyone's going to be operating in the same way you know people a lot of the kind of bad habits that people have you know relying on coffee or alcohol or other substances is kind of because they have to live this natural this life out of out of with their basic nature you know some people are night owls they do prefer to work work late some people do prefer to work early so it really depends on body clock and there's this concept here of the four hour life 4hl you might have seen that on twitter um, Paul Scalis and people like that came up with it. The whole concept of four hour life is you only have four hours free in the day if you do work a typical nine to five job to do what you want. And I would say often it's less than that because if you think about, okay, you need eight hours to sleep, you wake up in the morning, have to get ready for work, have to travel to work, spend eight hours or so at work, and then one hour traveling back, then you've got to do your chores, you know, shower, cook, clean, whatever. You're re left with very little to no free time during your work week. So a lot of the times, you know, people are, people are right? we're not robots who have this rigid routine, you know, having four hours free in your day to day life, not being able to operate by your basic body clock is quite demeaning and, and dehumanizing. Witty way. And I ended up in these environments where there was no prospect again with people developing. Everybody used to just kill company time by vaping, smoking, shitting on company time, creating gossip. One of them was literally being in a fucking bottom set class at school. It was just chaos. And then I left that and I helped people get off welfare for a bit in an even worse bit of Leeds called Beeston. Genuinely one of the most deprived, miserable places I've ever been in my life. It is more deprived than multiple parts of Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia. Like, So that's an interesting point there about how deprived some of these Part for the UK, the first world developed country with a high GDP, the line must go up of GDP and, and economic growth. But these places are kind of deprived. You just don't see them on the news all the time. Right. And this is what happens when you're in these uh, corporate environments. There's a lot of fake career development, and lots of dumb office gossip, uh, lots of people stuck in this miserable attitude and a lack of development, particularly for young men. And comparing this with parts of Southeast Asia, like Thailand or Philippines, which people might see a bit backwards or a bit uh, less developed. Those are places where there really is a buzz of growth and, and opportunity compared to the West. And, you know, young people, young men, they're going to be able to really sense the, the, the scam that they're being sold in corporate. And once they do wake up, they do end up leaving if they can. To land more top jobs in the city. And eventually I got a job working for 
a company called Reuters, who are one of the largest news agencies in the world. If you think about like BBC, Sky, other news companies, they often get their news through Reuters and Associated Press. They're sort of behind the scenes. When I was at Reuters, they always used to say we're the largest news company in the world. I don't know if they are. I think they're second, but they're a pretty prestigious news company. Bang smack in the middle of Canary Wharf. They supply a lot of the financial companies with the the latest news on on the markets very much like Bloomberg and I was working in their events division doing something called conference production conference production is a project management role where you essentially learn how to start a business from inception and see it through to finish so you learn a load of really useful skills doing it from market research to recruitment to sales marketing strategy execution so on and there were some very so this guy has a very good point here where he's talking about working at Reuters, working in Canary Wharf, which I showed you earlier at the start of the, um, the video, working in a fancy office like this, right? In a very expensive part of London, everything you pay for, your lunch, your travel there, everything's going to be like the most expensive in London. And you think you'd be getting like a higher living standard, a bit more interesting, engaging work, which is going to cover in a moment. But that's not actually the case. Right. And if you're doing a role and you're getting paid like 25 to 30 K a month, uh, sorry, 25 to 30 K a year. And you're doing things that are quite important, like sales roles, running events, attracting new clients to generate revenue for the company. You think you'd be getting paid more than that, particularly in central London. And I've heard some of these very low salaries, even in big four accounting firms, it's quite ridiculous how much young men are being exploited or younger people in general in their early 20s with these extremely low salaries and the thing is um, my my general comment to him and and to other people out there I'm very critical of, of the way they're treating some of these young employees but try to learn what you can in those circumstances right if you ha have an important role try to learn how the business works you can apply it to your own business and then quit when it is convenient for you but leverage everything leverage it as much as you can to benefit yourself company paid awfully and they had a fundamentally unmeritocratic system of paying people now i mentioned earlier how the recruitment schemes they lure you in with these promises of high commission that occasionally people will get but the majority won't in this company it wasn't like that they weren't wide boys they actually outlined in my interview how i would make x amount of money but there was a catch to it there was a caveat which was essentially when i got there the amount of money you make your commission was entirely debate, uh, based on luck of where you were allocated when you joined the company because they run events in multiple different sectors. Some were turning over millions, other like tens of thousands. So it was really luck where you got allocated. If you were on a good event, you would make good commission. And I was allocated to a brand new event that doesn't even run anymore. It, it failed because it just didn't fit in the market. And I had a new manager who was a really smart guy, very entrepreneurial. I, I rate him a lot and I learned a lot of useful stuff from him, but he was a brand new manager and he didn't really know how to manage people. Like he was new to it and like he lacked the, the management skills. So essentially I was thrown in at the deep end on a, br uh, <laughs> a brand new event. And it meant that I made basically no money in two years. I think it was one and a half K's commission in USD. So that's even less in GBP on a base salary of twenty five and a half thousand pounds, which they generously bumped up for me from twenty five as their initial offer. Why? Because I told them that I was on twenty five when I was in Leeds in my previous job. I was on twenty three and a half, but I made basically no progress. So what happened was I did a corporate job for a year and a half for a fucking shit salary, right? A really bad salary for London. They were paying way below the market rate of, of competitors and they expected far more than everybody else. The amount of responsibilities. So he's got a good point here in terms of being exploited. And, and this is what you realise. Uh, many of these other top companies, if you are new here, I have worked at uh, Goldman, Morgan Stanley and many other top banks. And without referencing any single one, some of these top companies, you think they'd pay well, but they think that, oh, you're so desperate to work for them that they'll give you a low salary or kind of, yeah, a low salary basically, right? And they think, okay, well, you're gonna have our company's name on your CV forever, so you know we'll pay you less and then maybe you can get the return you're looking for once you leave our company after several years because you can leverage our name to have a higher salary at other companies. This is how really insidious and exploitative these companies are now. He mentioning, you know, that Reuters, the major financial news company, a bit like Bloomberg, 
um, are paying way below market. You think they wouldn't pay below market. You think they'd be paying the top rate, right? If you go from working for a small little news agency to working for Thomson Reuters, you think, oh, I'm going to have a massive pay rise. But a lot of the times they're like, no, they really think you're the one to be exploited as an employee. Um, and what he's also pointing out here, firstly, it's good he's got a good dynamic with his manager who he clearly learned a lot from and you can always learn from people's successes and their weaknesses from their good decisions and their mistakes you can always say it's smart to learn from other people's mistakes and I've done both I've learned from both in terms of some good managers some not so good managers and also when you look at your management you should think about do you want to be that person in the future because if you stay on your cur current path that's who you'll become you'll become in that kind of whatever dynamics going on in their life whatever free time they have or don't have in their type of role if you continue just going through the motions in your day job you'll probably end up in a similar situation like that um, and also it just goes to show that even when you don't have maybe DEI or this type of focus on equality and things like that a lot of your success in the corporate environment is out of your control it's not based on competency or meritocracy if you end up in being hired into a team that is doing well currently then you've got a lot of potential to make a lot of money but if you're on a part of the business that doesn't matter as much then uh, you might not be in a good position to make a lot of money particularly in sales right if you're selling a product that is unproven that's brand new to the market you, you might struggle to to you know make the money that you're looking for so when you join a company try to get involved in the parts of the business that are growing and that can vary so you can have a good busy period for a particular area and then not so busy when i worked on sales and trading floors there'd be times where uh, the commodities business was doing quite well and there are other times where the credit trading products loan trading products was doing well for example so then it's like sometimes you don't know you know, which direction should you had head and which project should you get involved in because there's a downturn in the market in the commodities and you're working there you could lose your job or not get paid well through no fault of your own so a large part of uh, any corporation that you work at and particularly advice for junior employees out there is trying to understand the team the projects the manager dynamics and are you on the right that or on the wrong side of that through no fault of your own just where you've been placed and try to adapt to that over time uh, for things that should have been communicated a number of cock-ups like not being trained properly and then really getting the blame for it as a new graduate and fundamentally what i saw in that is that you know it's not surprising but the corporations just do not give a flying fuck about you or the well-being of their staff it is total bollocks it's all virtue signaling and greenwashing they have these eaps these uh, employee assistant programs like oh yeah you know we give you a mental health day and a free headspace subscription but then they fundamentally overwork their staff and underpay them right the, things like this it's just all surface level and when i was working in this company i worked with numerous other multinationals my clients were all the banks and fintechs and one of the things so a quick point there is that if you're at a junior level and a reason why men are kind of seeing through the scam and leaving corporate jobs for freedom is typically they're not trained well you prepare you to fail they prepare to make you look worse than the manager that may, may have even hired you to do the job to justify their position. And I'll give you an example. I remember working for a major investment bank on the trading floor and I just joined and I was relatively, I was like I say, a couple of years into my career, but it was a completely new type of work I was doing and a whole new set of risky billion dollar risks that we were managing to put it nicely right and we're, we're working on a new system i've never worked on it before and i've just asked my manager for some assistance and he just refused to help me and i've never used the system i don't know how it works and i'm trying to read around it but i don't know am i meant to google the instructions and he was just being so unhelpful with it he would literally walk away from the desk and just expect me to do this whole new process that there is no instructions for a system I don't know how to use. And they set you up to fail. And then they'll only they'll only look to help you when it benefits them, right? So in that case, he would only help me out when more senior managers were around so he could demonstrate his management skills. And he would deliberately try to make me look dumber than him. Like, cause I just started the role and he, he was part of the hiring decision to hire me. So I don't know, what, what does he really have to gain from I'm not even competing for his job. There's like five years of experience between us. So I'm more junior than him. He, I was at like analyst level. He was at vice president level. 
but these are the type of things that you, you do. People are being mean to you or deliberately trying to undermine you. And it's like, I've just been doing the job for two or three months. Uh, I'm asking a question that would be completely valid. How do I use the new system? So this goes to show these big corporations, they're not as glamorous as you think. And you really got to look out for your best interest. And we're going to learn some interesting takes from his uh, analysis here. Things that really changed my mind on work was actually working with the entrepreneurs of the fintechs, the startups, and seeing the difference in the way that they were compared to the senior executives at the, the corporate banks in terms of how they could communicate, how free they were in the, their thinking. It was so much more exciting speaking with these like crypto entrepreneurs, these fintech entrepreneurs, than the majority of the senior level executives in, in the largest banks in the world. There was one who was different. He was a product manager at a, a bank called Erste Group, which is like the Austrian uh, and Hungarian Central European major bank. And he just spoke his mind at conferences and it was fantastic to see. But most of the time you could see just how conformist it was. And although my company was a bit more casual corporate, for example, we didn't have to wear suits in the office actually, um, but there was still that conformity element to it, which is what is expected in the workplace. And I really dislike that, these, all these subtle codes that you have to pick up on, the internal politics and the dynamics, the hierarchies of places. They were actually quite flat in the company hierarchically, but that's not even a word, is it? Their, their hierarchy wasn't, it was pretty flat, right? But there was still a kind of hierarchy there. There were the top dogs, the ones that you aspire to be, the people that had the most power and influence and persuasion. And all these little things I just didn't like. I remember my mentor one day saying to me, and he was also... So before we dive back into some of his other commentary, because he's got lots of good things to say. Firstly, a fintech is definitely an area that you might want to work in. Of course, if you've got a high paying, easy corporate job at a major corporation, maybe stick with that. But I recommend everyone at one point within their industry, whether it's finance or tech, and you're working for maybe a more stable major company, if you have a layoff, if you have the opportunity, at least spend a couple years working at a smaller company to, uh, or a more innovative startup, a fintech company, things like that. That's where you're going to find that buzz that you're looking for, typically from a job where it's a bit less predictable, a bit less you can control your own schedule, work how you actually want to work and wear what you want to wear. And what he's saying here about these kind of environments being more exciting than the conformist banks is very similar to what I've been saying right throughout my videos. I'm trying to help you know, give you an honest take about what it's like working some of these corporate careers and how to navigate this rather than being stuck in a situation where you're kind of, you're, you're kind of working for a big name company and it's not giving you the fulfillment you're looking for. And there's all these subtle codes of you know, uh, corporate office politics, hierarchy and things like that. Now, lots of times when you do have the term flat structure or flat hierarchy, what that really means, it's very, complex but what it means is that we have layers of management but if you're more junior you have the power to rise through the ranks by just you know taking ownership of all the work you're doing and kind of doing your manager's role so that's what it is kind of weird in that way so if you're at more junior levels you hear the term flat structure we have a flat management structure it just means if you're more junior you're more on the firing line in the sense that you got to take responsibility for all that you do and your manager doesn't necessarily have to step in you, you're expected to take ownership for anything that goes well or not so well in your workload so just look out for that term if that does come up and then the other thing to look out for is my experience working with some kind of crypto fintech startups is that they are more entrepreneurial you do get more senior exposure and there's lots of more exciting work to do there the only slight risk is that you know, that startup doesn't do well you could be subject to a layoff senior management really have to like your personality because it's very a small company a small team they really focus on you know who's maybe fitting in with corporate with a small company's culture even if it is a more casual culture not a corporate culture they want people to kind of fit in with that with other people um and just a quick bit of advice you management have to like you so you know being presentable is quite important and you know, there's a phrase, you know, don't dress for the job you have, dress for the job you want. Um, so just, you know, still present yourself in a, you know, smart, casual, presentable way in those corporate, in those uh, startup companies, because they still are expecting some of that. Don't be too casual in a, in a, in a startup company just because you think everyone else is like that. 
And it's also about, you know, what your interest areas, right? A lot of these young men, they want to be part of the new buzzing innovative areas, whether it's like I say, a startup company, a fintech company, a small tech company. They don't want to be stuck in these rigid, boring nine to fives, you know, work the job, the, the typical life that you see a lot of people get trapped in, middle management, mortgage, dead end marriage, dead bedrooms, you check that out on Reddit, things like that. Lots of people stuck in these dead end scenarios. And as I say, the, the, a man's primary instinct, particularly a young man, will be for freedom. And when he senses this kind of trap, he's going to instinctually either get depressed or want to escape it. So that's something to look out for. Now, an interesting piece of advice for any of the young men out there or anyone in general who is looking to develop their career is not to read this book, but to use a phrase that I've come up with, right? This book is a dating book, I guess, from Steve Harvey, who I assume is as successful in, in his dating life, I would, maybe, I don't know. Um, but he has this phrase, act like a lady and think like a man. But there's a phrase I've come up with, which would be, you act like an employee and think like an entrepreneur. Now, what I mean by that is if you are working those corporate jobs at Thomson Reuters or Goldman Sachs or wherever else, really try to understand how a successful business works, right? Even though these corporations, as I say, lots of suspect activity, inefficient processes, but you can still develop skills to you know, go out and do your own thing, whether it's becoming a consultant or contract worker, things like that. So really think about acting like an employee, pretending to play along with all the dumb rules, the start and end time of work, the extra work, whatever you need to do to survive. But think like an entrepreneur that, okay, how can I escape this? Whether it's savings, investments, budgeting effectively, developing some skills on the side. Act like an employee, pretend to play the role and think like an entrepreneur, which is how you get your freedom as a man who's looking to escape the current paradigm. Now let's dive back into his story here. A really good bloke, really top bloke. But he told me, look, Ollie, you need to stop coming in at 10 a.m. because others in the office are seeing it and they don't think you're pulling in your weight. Even though I was leaving the office later than them and the reason I was coming in later was because I had reasonable adjustments, literally protected under law, under the Equality Act, because my mental health at the time meant that I really struggled to get out of bed in the morning. I was so depressed that that was the hardest part of my day, but I got judged for it. And despite that, my, my mentor, I said he was a top bloke, but he just didn't really understand it either. He was like, you know, you, you need to cut your teeth here. And I just really hated that mentality around things, that corporate conformity. And I didn't really know that there was much else out there, even though it was so fucking blatant. All it took was for somebody to say, well, why don't you do your own thing? Why don't you set up your own business? And at the time, I was very much caught in this victim mindset as well. I, like when you are depressed, unfortunately, you do fall into a victim mindset. You feel very self-pitying and in a hole and there's, you feel like the whole world is against you. And I, I was like that. I would have been a massive drain on some of my, my colleagues uh, around me because of how I was. And I don't say that to negate how depression is as, as somebody who's had seven years experience with it and is still kind of prone to it now like but unfortunately it, you know being around that it, it, it can drag you down and, and make you feel worse and some of my colleagues sure I, I really would have been just a, a drain on them complaining all the time but not actually doing anything about it and all it took was for somebody to say right well you have to take responsibility here and do something about it leave do something different so that's a great little point there right so in terms of you know, when it comes to flexible working, so firstly, bit of advice for anyone out there, when you join a company, read the employee handbook, read your job contract, see what availability you have for flexible working, whether that's, you know, a mental health issue in the UK recently, there've been some improvements to give you that flexibility. It's one of the only benefits of having this Labour government who are cracking down on people's freedom of speech. But if you want to ask your employer for flexible working to be able to work slightly different work hours, to maybe start a bit later because of a mental health issue or for whatever reason, dropping off kids at school, having depression, things like that. He managed to have a start time of 10 a.m. And this is the hypercritical element of these major corporations and this culture you have in general. They're like, we don't mind being accommodating to you, you know, but it's gonna act, it's gonna work against you. Yeah, we have a, a law and a company policy that is flexible working. You can start at 10 a.m. and finish at 6 p.m. instead of working a nine to five, but we'll leverage that against you. From a perception standpoint and in corporations, 
perception as reality, which means how people are perceiving you is way more important than the reality of the quality of work you're doing. So you can do good quality of work and start at 10 a.m., but people are gonna perceive you as being lazy because you're not starting at 9 a.m. with everyone else. This is how ridiculous it is, right? And Gen Z, these younger men, they're typically under attack. Not only are they under financial attack when it comes to difficulty to get jobs, more layoffs, inability to buy a house, they're under social attack, dysfunctional gender dynamics, and um, they're also attacked for, you know, having that impact them, you know, feeling a lack of meaning, a lack of purpose, developing mental health issues like depression and anxiety due to the social dynamics and the, the lack of financial progress in their life. And this is what happens, right? This is why you have these generational issues and the older generations are just like, oh, you should come in at 9 a.m. like the rest of us. The, the 40 year old guy or older who, who are out of touch with the, the ridiculous dysfunctionality that the younger generations are dealing with, he probably has more incentive to come in at 9 a.m. Maybe he has a wife and a kid and a mortgage and he has a stability of a life built around him. He fits in more socially with this workplace corporate environment. Many people don't and they don't feel that way so they're gonna get depressed and they're gonna want some flexibility. People are either directly, assertively or passive aggressively or through an excuse going to assert control over their own life. Whether it's saying, oh, I'm gonna start working through getting the appropriate approvals 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. People are gonna push back one way or another and the passive aggressive way of pushing back is not doing much work. Another approach is, you know, working the work hours that are convenient for you. So that's what is important to consider, you know, the level of corporate conformity, it can really weigh down on you if you are going into these environments. So, you know, act accordingly and maneuver accordingly in this type of thing. Or as this many young men are pursuing, they're looking to pursue their financial freedom from this rigged system. What actually happened was I got burnt out and I got signed off work for six months. I reached burnout. I had three rounds of burnout when I was there. The final time physically, and mentally, I could not hack it. I could not bring myself to sit at my laptop. I had heart palpitations. I had a chronic rosacea flare up, which is a skin condition that I have. It, it's normally much better when I'm abroad, actually. It's flared up a little bit again now that I'm in the UK, but when I've been in hot countries in Asia, it just completely goes down. Um, but I was struggling with my skin. My mental health was terrible. My IBS was, was bad. Like my, my central nervous system was just completely out of whack. And the only way that I was coping, which I take full responsibility for that did not help, was I would send it on the weekends. I would be pissed Thursday to Saturday, sometimes even Sunday, getting involved with the other things, the uh, certain uh, packeted source that basically powers the financial sector of London and chefs in London and basically everybody in London. So my lifestyle choices were not helping. And I reached burnout, but fundamentally, I would say just because of my mental dissatisfaction in that life and feeling trapped in the corporate world and seeing. So what he mentions here is you know, people get burnt out. And as I say, they develop bad habits. In his case, he mentions drinking on the weekends and the packeted sauce is his reference to, um, you know, a white powder substance that people sometimes do in the finance industry, things like that. So this is what I mean about. If you're in this scenario and you're really unhappy with your current dynamic, you need to think and have a, a plan to quit or quiet quit. You know, whether it's securing a massive layoff package or as big as a layoff package as you can get, whether it's getting sick leave so you get paid time off work to recover from depression or something like that. But that's a better approach to take, even though quiet quitting might be considered controversial, instead of, you know, resorting to poor lifestyle habits, right? Which would involve, you know, doing substances, as he mentions on the weekend. And... This is, what he's done is basically he speed run the uh, midlife crisis. He, he's gone from uh, maybe being in his early 20s, let's just say 25. He speed run that time frame and the realizations that some men reach at 45 when they have a midlife crisis. At 25, he's like, okay, cool. If I continue, as he's clearly done, he'd be dependent on alcohol, other illicit substances. He'd uh, be depressed. He would feel unfulfilled and he's come to that realization very quickly within the space of a year or so of working at Reuters. So it really makes you consider how bad it can be working in some of these places. Decided that I'd go all in in social media and then I got signed off work and I got sick pay for, for six months and I moved to Leeds actually. I, I left London because the cost of living there it just if you're on 25k in London and you're getting taxed on top of that. You just can't really live 
a, a normal life, especially considering the entire culture of London is going out and drinking and doing things. And then even if you want to get into sport, you're going to spend loads of money getting into these these gyms and the food that you're doing. Like It was just such a bad value for money living there. So I moved to Leeds to cut my costs down. I had my sick pay and I went all in on building my personal brand. And eventually I set up my coaching business as well. And it got to a point where I was earning more from that than I was working for the largest news company in the world in the prestigious graduate job that what I learned in time was just a title that was there to, to be flexed. And, and that's very much how London is. Oh yeah, yeah, I work for Barclays. Yeah, yeah no, I'm JP. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, private equity. La, like just all of this bullshit, man. And I realized it just wasn't worth it. There was a better life to be had. And I knew this whole So this is great, right? This guy's coming to, coming to a lot of conclusions that like I say, many people would take such a long time to reach, right? Step one, leave London. So, so I mentioned a couple points of advice there. You pursue quiet quitting, try to get some paid time off work due to a mental health issue. Step one for him and many other people will believe the high cost of living area, right? That you're in, right? Even if you're on that sick leave and you're living off that, the company paying you for a couple of months and not working. If you want to save money, he moved from London to Leeds. Leeds is a small city, a small town, um, where you can obviously get lower living costs if you're renting your property, paying for food. And step two is like finding another solution for your, your lifestyle and your unhappiness. In some cases, he mentioned in other videos, doing some martial arts, Muay Thai, things like that, to find a bit more fulfillment because the fulfillment wasn't coming from his job. And this is what the reality many people are in. You might be getting a high paying job or a prestigious job, but not only in his case, it's not financially paying well, paying well. in other cases it might be, but it's not providing the fulfillment you, you want. And the fulfillment you're looking for will come through either setting up your own business and finding your purpose that way, or through your family, through hobbies and things like that. The truth is, you might more personally identify with and have a, a better time doing your hobby in the evening, whether it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Muay Thai, than you do with the job that pays your bills and that is kind of the core of your life, which is your nine to five. So it's very interesting dynamic here, right? So he ended up developing some skills around fitness coaching and he does some work around that on the side to develop his own income. And what he pointed out here is very important, this whole thing about title, job titles, and status culture. Now this explains London, explains the finance industry, med many other corporate environments, New York, places like that. It's all about, you know, what's your job title? How can other people leverage that to benefit them? You know, uh, or where do you work? Or what company do you work for? What's your job title? This is the type of uh, social dynamic you'll be caught up in all the time. And if you're someone like me or someone like this guy, and you're not caught up in, I'm not judging people based on their job title or the company they work for. I'm not trying to leverage that to benefit myself i just like to be around you know good people who are pushing thing pushing the world in the right direction <laughs> and he does it through some things around mental health coaching for men and fitness coaching things like that and the thing is these things are so undervalued in this society and this society just wants you to be focused on as i say your job title and many people with these fancy job titles he would probably be viewed as more of a contributed to society with a fancy job title working for a big name company like the Reuters news agency getting paid 25 grand a year and like many other people who have these fancy job titles some of them are underpaid and you'd be surprised because they have all the trappings of a high paying job they might have an expensive suit or watch or car lots of these things like the car could be on loan they could be buying all those expensive things. They don't have a lot of money in savings or investments. And they're keeping up appearances to fit in an environment that doesn't pay them well. It's a bit like some of these rappers, some of these music artists. They have these expensive material items, but behind the scenes, they don't own a lot of it. A lot of it is owned by the record label, and it's all a bunch of show. And that's why if you want your freedom, and if you're a man out there and you're looking for your freedom, you have to escape the status culture. Don't be worried about people judging you because you're not working for a big name company anymore. You don't have a job title like vice president. You're not an executive director. If you're too attached to those titles, those titles come with shackles. So that's another good phrase there, right? Titles come with shackles and those shackles are going to keep you to the corporate job even if you're unhappy with it. Like golden handcuffs, you're being handcuffed to a job you don't like just to play in this social status game that isn't paying off for you. 
are working in corporate as a young man right now, if you are ambitious, if you are driven, if you're entrepreneurial, you do enjoy work and the fulfillment of it in networking with ambitious people, etc. You can have that life, but without all the bullshit and the conformity that comes with the corporate environment that you find in places in like London and without having the most ridiculous cost of living in exchange for a mediocre salary, unless you're one of these people who's in private equity or investment banking and yeah, you're earning like a quarter of a meal. But even then, if you have... So that's a good point he's making there. You know, there's only really a handful of people who are making those quarter of a million um, dollar salary, you know, 250K salary. Many people actually not, right? Lots of people, trust me, I've seen them, I know them. They're maybe working and in an investment bank on a trading floor getting paid you know, 100 to 200K, and you might think that's a high salary. Firstly, that comes with a lot of high tax. Secondly, it comes up with them having to play the social status games. They end up buying a house that they can barely afford with a high mortgage, high interest rate. They also have to buy all the other expensive trappings, like I say, cars, watches, and things like that to fit in with that social class to maintain that lifestyle. And they're basically a slave to their job. They don't have as much freedom as you think they would have. And that's what I mean. If you want to work without corporate culture, this is what I see as the long-term role that many men will play. Many men will drop out. Some, of course, will stick with their standard job, but they will. some of them will drop out and play video games and just not be social and not be going outside too much, as you do see in Japan with that kind of neat culture, NEE, not in education, employment or training. Many men drop out of society. And some of them will play video games, chill at home, do whatever they want to do, maybe not have families, wives and kids and things like that. But there will be other men who will have a long-term vision like I do, of doing something productive but doing it on their own terms um, and working for themselves. So I hope you found that helpful. If you are looking out there for career advice and someone who's going to give you honest career advice and not take advantage of you like many of these corporations do, I would recommend you reach out to me with a link in description for some great career advice. Let me know in the comments what you think about men dropping out of society and dropping out of the workforce and pursuing freedom. Because I'm sure many of the men who watch this, their end goal isn't climbing the corporate ladder. It really is reaching that financial freedom or the time freedom status that they're looking for. There are two recommended videos on the screen right now, and I'll see you next time.